This morning when the alarm went off, it says it's two degrees Celsius outside. Then I pulled my blanket and say I didn't go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to today's service. I see my two people whether that they might still be on the way to coming or <laughs> They'll come up with an excuse that you know we joined you online because it was cold. <laughs> but you who made it to today's to, to service, God is proud of you. Amen. Today we are celebrating the wedding anniversary of Ndate Joseph Mapeto and Magdalene Mapeto. They are celebrating 86 years in marriage. <laughs> And on the 19th, we'll be celebrating wedding anniversary of John and Gigi John. We'll be celebrating 30 years in marriage. Yeah. Talking about John and Gigi John, let us upon them in our prayers. Did they go back to India? On the way to India. They're on the way to India. They're on the way to India. Unfortunately, not on a good note. He just lost his grandmother. Then Father, so let us keep them on our prayers. And then on the 21st, we'll be waiting on the result of six dollars in La La Mukwena, who will be celebrating 26 years in marriage. Are they here with us? <laughs> and is there anyone who's living their birthdays today? Those who were born in this temperature. <laughs> People who decided to get married in June. I don't know, maybe they thought people won't come and attend their wedding. That's why they chose June. We don't know. Let us pray. But God, we did have come into this holy place to worship you, to talk to you, Lord, and to hear what you are saying to us. Be with us, Lord, in our midst and in our hearts. And Lord, silence all voices in our thoughts and in our hearts that may be troubling us, Lord, this morning, so that your voice only can be heard. For it is your voice, Lord, that comes down on the storms in us. Come, Lord, and be with us, Lord. We pray, Lord, for the family of John, Marie, John, and Gigi, John, Lord, as they are on the road, Lord, to go and pay their last respect to, to their father. That Lord, travel with them, Lord. And Lord, we pray for all those who have asked us to pray them, to keep them in our prayers whenever we pray. You know them, Lord, and you know their needs. Graciously, Lord, hear them when they talk to you. And we ask you, Lord, that shall those who are celebrating their best days today, Lord, and throughout the week. We shall we shall everlasting blessings, Lord. And to those Lord who are celebrating the holy and blessings, may your Holy Spirit continue to unite them, Lord. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. The service is as usual continues on page 104 in our prayer books. Nevertheless, everything shall continue to be projected on the overheads. Dear sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Praise you, of the Lord. And blessed be God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. 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 Lord, have mercy.
Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandment and to live in love and peace with our neighbor. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, great and deep, and in what you have left undone, for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, for you are so us and grant that we serve you in the midst of life to the glory of your chapter 25 of the book of Genesis from verse 19 through to verse 34. This is the account of the family line of Abram's son Isaac. Abram became the father of Isaac and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean, from Padan Aram and sister of Laban, the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife, because she was childless. The Lord answered his prayer, and his wife, Rebekah, became pregnant. The babies jostled each other within her, and she said, Why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. The Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. When the time came for her to give birth, there were twin boys in her womb. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment, so they named him Esau. After this, his brother came out, with his hand grasping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. <coughs> Isaac was 60 years old when Rebekah gave birth to them. The boys grew up and Esau became a skillful hunter, a man of the open country, while Jacob was content to stay at home among the tents. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country 
famished. He said to Jacob, Quick, let me have some of that bread stew. I'm famished. That is why he was also called Edom. Jacob replied, First sell your birthright. Look, I am about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? But Jacob said, Swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank, and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. Hear the word of the Lord. Yes. <laughs> Our my church is up for today is um, 119. We're going to read from verse 105 up to 113. I'll start with the odd numbers and multiply it into the even numbers. Your way is a lantern to my feet and a light to my path. I have been afflicted beyond measure. Lord, give me life according to your word. I take my life in my hands continually, yet I do not forget you alone. The wicked have for me, but I do not stay from my sisters. Your commands are my inheritance forever. They are the joy of my heart. I have set my heart to fulfill your service, always to the end. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. The second reading is found in the book of Romans, chapter 8, starting from verses, verse 1 to verse 11. Romans 8, verse 1 to 11. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because, because through Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives the life has set you free from the law of the sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in the flesh, in order that righteous requirement of the law might be fully met in us, who do not live according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. <clears throat> the mind governed by the flesh is death. But the mind governed by the Spirit in life is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, 
And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. Hear the word of the Lord. Let us rise up for our
We are still our Lord if you get the same. Come Lord and speak to us God. And the word of my, my, my meditation. And the word of my heart and the meditation of my heart Lord. Be accepted Lord in my sight. My God and Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Now let me ask a few questions to ponder upon throughout the entire message. When you hear the word God or Jesus, what comes to your mind? I mean, when you hear about those words, God and Jesus, what comes to your mind? Eternity. And many more. But do you feel a deep sense of reverence when you hear those two words? Do you feel love and gratitude when you hear God in Jesus? Or is that like other names that were used to us in this world? Or does this word become a name labels or can't concept that holds no real significance in real life. Similarly, when Sunday approach, do you feel a different sense of anticipation of enjoy or does it pass by just like another day in the week? I mean, when Sunday approach, does something move you to say that today is Sunday? Or it's just like other days where you say, let it pass, I'll catch up in the street. What happens with you? How do you feel? Or perhaps, for those who go to work, by about two or six, and feel this weather, how do you feel about Sunday? Is it similar with Monday, perhaps? Because nobody loves Monday at all. There was an advert which I wish with a cartoon I said we can we are cutting Monday today's Tuesday. <laughs> for no one wants to go to work on Monday. When Monday comes, when Sunday comes, does it have the same feeling, perhaps a Sunday? Where is that saying, you know what? I'm not ready for this. Where it brings worries and stress. Or do you approach Sunday? with a different mindset as a day of reflection and day of worship that the thought of going to work affects your Sunday routine that it affects a time that you should be spending talking to God is Sunday a bonus day for you to sit at home and relax, or perhaps go to golf and bow Sunday school <laughs> and come knowing that it's after Sunday school. These questions are not just meant to judge or to condemn, but to provoke how we think of God sometimes. Paul writes to the Romans, Romans to consider how they are living their lives. He was concerned as parents about the Roman people's relationship with God. It seems as if these people, the Romans, they knew who God is and they knew who God is the point that they don't respect God anymore. God is just like other anyone. They have forgotten their relationship with God. He writes as a minister whose duty is to love, to care, to forgive, and to teach 
and to the minds. Paul was concerned by how the Romans were treating themselves. Instead of them living as brothers and sisters and continue to do what Jesus said they should live on doing, they live their life judging each other, saying that as for me, the life I'm the best for you because I know God. There was a division between the Gentiles and the Jews on who is the best and who does the best. Paul writes the Romans as a sower whose duty is to plant a seed with the, with the expectation of good results rather than the weeds. I didn't know that there was a difference between a sower and a gardener. But a sower is someone who goes and prepares the soil and plants in the seeds. A gardener, I got to understand that a gardener is someone who takes care of what was planted. So Paul here is playing a role of a sower where he expects that we will look after each other as gardeners of each other's sins to make sure that if I see no, I can't say if I see a weed in Father Man, it is older than me. <laughs> if Father Man sees a weed in me, it's so that he can come and take care of the garden. from condemnation that Christ offers for us all. For it was through Christ that we have a freedom of worship. It was through Christ that we got to know who God is. Paul declared that therefore, and let me listen to the word, how is that is present? Therefore, it means that already in the previous chapter of chapter 7, that ah, he was already talking on how the Romans were living. He started the sentence with therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The weight of our guilty and shame has been lifted through the Love of Jesus Christ for us. Our sins are forgiven and we are set free from the power of sin and death. This newfound freedom should fill us with gratitude and motivate us to kick our blankets in the morning and say we are coming to worship God. When the temperature says, Two degrees Celsius outside, I said, forward, I go to worship God. But, even if God has given us this free gift and, has, and given us the opportunity to come and worship God, but we continue to live our lives as those who are condemned by the things of this world. I love what Muslim, how Muslims live their lives. We all know that we can't go to the Muslim shop on Friday at lunchtime. We all know that, that if I go to that shop at lunchtime, I'll find the shop closed. Why? Because they respect their relationship with Allah. What about us? Hence, the Muslim people they don't need someone to remind them. But as for us, we always, always need a reminder that don't forget that tomorrow is Sunday, please come to church. It means that if you don't get a reminder, what will happen with you? 
You will come to church on Christmas because, of course, Christmas, the regulars will be talking about please go to church. <laughs> to live a victorious Christian life, we must learn to walk according to the Spirit of God. Just do them because 
I just need to do them. But we don't really understand them as how they were done before. It's like a stage and I went to my to the ones and say, Woman, sorry, the more you will make it But we don't understand what happens there anymore. Just because that it's a stage that a child must live in life. And if the child has that stage to recover it, it's not easy. I don't think it's so it's Christianity. For Christianity should our daily our daily devotion of life, of how we live our lives. It should be a daily thing that we do that I don't go to the house of God Sunday if you can in. But you know what? We Christians, we live our lives as if we are making favor for God. But God would rather favor than we to get us on time. That's how we live our lives if we are making favor for God. I wonder if it's so with God. And then the Christian lifestyle is marked by the power of the Holy Spirit burning within us. Remember the baptism that you were baptized into? My little few you were still young and crying. You don't even recall anymore. Okay, remember the confirmation when you came and took the vows on your own. You remember, still remember that. That majority of you us, perhaps we went to confirmation because our parents pushed us. It's not something that we wanted. And I don't think that's how Christianity is like. So, what we affirms out of love about Christianity, it should be something that shall always carry us on our daily basis of life. And Paul affirms that on verse chapter, in chapter 8, verse 9b, he said, And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But for us who stood on confirmation and took the Spirit of Christ, in us, we don't have to be reminded about our relationship with God. For we should know that we are forever with God. The Holy Spirit is not merely a distant force, but a personal presence in our lives. And the same Spirit that Raise Jesus from the dead. And took him up to God. In the same spirit that is forever with us and among us, for in the same spirit that God gave it to us when Jesus ascended to go to heaven as our keeper. But so we have no excuse not to allow the Holy Spirit to, to lead us. So that we can take over control of our mortal bodies. So as Christians, we need to value our relationship with God. We need to go back to the first day when you took vows to become a Christian. And where did you go wrong? Are you still living your life according to what you vowed, you vowed before? Embracing a victorious Christian lifestyle requires us to recognize the liberation from condemnation we have received through Christ. To walk according to God and according to the Holy Spirit. To allow the Holy Spirit to discern our thoughts and action and even what we say before we talk. And going back to the words of our brothers and pray what's which one side that it, we need to position ourselves to the right place so that we allow God to talk to us at the right time. So it means that we need to go back from the beginning and ask God that God, here I am again. I'm ready to walk with you again. 
And as we do so, we become a living testimony of God's grace and love. Our life becomes a testimony to a non-believer. Not a testimony that someone will to come and ask you. No, a testimony that someone will see you far from far and say, I wish to be like that person. For I see Christ in that person. For our characters or how we live our lives will show and will preach the gospel without us saying anywhere to this world. And my dear brothers and sisters, Paul writes to the Romans as a concerned parents to remind them about their relationship with God. May we also be reminded about our relationship with God, who God is to us, and the vows that we chose for God, knowing that there is no one now to come and push us to go to God. It is our choice to go to God. And when we go to God, there are some rewards that we shall gain. May we continually seek to align our thoughts, action, and desires with God's will, knowing that in Him we found a true freedom, purpose, abundant love, and family. Therefore, let us go, let us go first. Empowered by the Spirit of the Holy Spirit and live out our calling as, this, as faithful followers of Jesus Christ. We need to live as a good seed that fell on good soil, which Jesus referred to as someone who has the word and understand it. For our lifestyles shall grow many and many to yield a good crop, which yielding hundreds, sixty and thirty times from you. We need to go like back and offer our lives to Christ and live the life that Christ wants us to live and be the preachers of God's gospel, not by our words only, but through our actions too. And therefore, when you hear the name of God and the name of Jesus Christ, what comes to you? And when Sunday approach, what brings to your sense? Does it bring anything good or does it bring worries like Monday we need to go to work?
119. As we celebrate the Holy Eucharist to the glory of God and in the thanksgiving of His mercy, let us pray for His Church in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who promised to be in Jesus Christ to hear us when we pray in His name. We pray for your church throughout the world, and especially for the diocese, and for our bishop, together with our metropolitan. Give your church the power to proclaim the gospel of Christ, and grant that we and all Christian people may be united in truth. Live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We thank you, Father, for the resources of the world and its beauty, particularly our weather, particularly the air that we breathe, particularly the intelligence that you've given us, particularly the free will that you have granted us. Give to all a reverence for your creation and make us worthy stewards of your gifts. Lord, we may see. We pray for the nations of the world, and especially for this country and its leaders. We are still putting forward and pledging um, with regard to load shedding in all things that are affecting us as South Africans. Unemployment, crime, gender-based violence, all those issues that give us sleeplessness. Give wisdom to those in authority, direct this in every nation in the way of justice and peace, that all may honor one another and seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. We pray for our families and friends and those with special claims upon us. We pray for those that are grieving. We have grown so accustomed to burying our loved ones on a weekly basis. We have grown so accustomed to families being estranged to one another. We are now even growing accustomed, accustomed to children being disobedient to their parents. Give grace to all whose lives are closely linked to us, that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for those in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity especially drug, substance abuse, especially any kind of addiction. To all who suffer, give courage, healing and steadfast trust in your love. Lord, have mercy. Yes. We remember with thanksgiving your servants who have gone before us. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Yes. We bless and praise you for all your saints, for the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord, for the patriots, prophets, apostles, martyrs, whom we remember today, and we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing heart. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Merciful Father, accept those, these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>
our series continues on page 116 in our prayer books. And we join together to pray the same paragraph of 48. Together we say, Source of life, the heaven and the earth are yours. Yet you have given us to be in power all things. Receive the fruits of our labor, of our love, in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together is the two prayers that follow us. And together we say, <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness and your great offer, which I have given and made men's great, for us in times of great life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord, Lord of all After sight. 
in his blood, which shed for you, fit all him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
Good morning, church. Sunday school has prepared a prayer for you. Of that holy fellowship and to draw in love and obedience according to 
take me somewhere else. Here is not doing good. But through your prayers and support, we continue going forward. Thank you all. Church Warden. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Uh, what's in that uh, note of prayer? Can we, uh, on our pilgrimage, we have a prayer there that is very important that we need not to forget. I'm going to ask a multimedia to project it for us so that we can pray it before I get into um, the announcements. Let us pray. God, the giver of the fundraising. Um, I think uh, maybe let me start with you and give you that opportunity and then let me complete uh, my life. Good morning, Church. Good morning. Good morning. Um, on a lighter note, I just want to ask a question. Um, you know your Bible and there's a verse that says no weapon. <laughs> Would we be right this morning to say no gold formed against us? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I'm standing here to uh, again remind you of the Maasai fundraising. For those that were not here when we explained, this was a concept uh, that uh, came from uh, AMF, those of the red tiles, if you can look around. But as a fundraising concept, it was not aimed at uh, the red tiles, but at every man in this church. So to come and uh, raise funds, because we do know that uh, you know through our monthly giving, sometimes or many times we come or fall short of our target, such that uh, many things that need to be done at church we are unable to achieve because the funds are short. And so AMF looked at it and said, "No, let us uh, as one of the things that we do, we want to target uh, um, what do you call this." maintenance at church and so we need to raise funds for that so we as men can we come up and meet on a certain day just to raise funds and so all men are invited to the Maasai fundraising which will be held on the 26th of uh, August at um, Maasai Lodge 44 Langenhoven Street in Ivy Park. Not all men are only invited, but women as well, families as well. The plea that uh, we are making is that uh, from now till the 26th, can we just uh, look for people that are able to sow, to begin to sow our pockets so that they can become a little bit shorter? so that when we put our hands inside, 
we can get to the money quicker. <laughs> um, so that then the money can come out and then we raise funds so that this precinct can be looked after. You know our building is very old, I think it must be about 60 years or so. Plus, is somewhere around there. So, constantly we need to do repairs to the, to the, to the, to the church and the whole precinct as well. And we, that needs funds. We can't be looking at the doors that are falling apart and we say, maybe someone uh, will come up with a plan. We need to come up with a plan ourselves. And so you are all invited. More details are still going to come. We are putting final touches uh, to the whole fundraising uh, uh, event. It is, it is a beautiful event because uh, it only runs for a few hours. No more than three hours. No more than two hours. When I'm saying three, it includes also lunch. <laughs> and uh, it is such a beautiful event because when we share lunch, what I actually notice is that there are quite a number of business people or people that are knowledgeable in business and they are not shy to impart their knowledge. So come and gain something as well. So you're not just you know, putting your money out, but we are also learning how to bring money in for yourself. Um, Puno is going to be held on the 3rd of uh, December. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> we are actually, you know, reminding you well ahead of time. 3rd of December is still a bit far, but we need to prepare now. And so this year, the target is for children, 300 plans. And for adults, it's 1,400 plans. Just need to say something about one may look and say, ah, it was 1,002 last year, 1,004 this year. Is it not a bit steep? But Puno is, if I understand well, an agricultural region. Rearing. Rearun. I hope I'm saying it in proper uh, uh, We cultivate our fields, we sow. And then we reap and harvest. And so, if I understand it well, I do not think that uh, in the proper way we can reap for the whole year or harvest 1,400. So, in short, what I'm trying to say is that 1,400 is minimum. You are not restricted. If God has blessed you, give more. Someone says 50 pounds. It is possible. 1,400 is just but a minimum to say, let, let me not give less than this. We start there. But let's build it up and build it up and see what God is going to do for us. And when they end, they say, let us work together for the success of our church and for the success of the ministry that we've been called to. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, my brother. Uh, even in agriculture, the harvester is the most valued uh, uh, machinery, especially when we are planting grains. Yeah, so we, we, we are looking forward to pull. I just want to bring your attention to the verse of the week. Joshua 3 verse 7, it is appearing on our purity plate. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel, so that so they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. It is the verse of the week. I just want to encourage you to meditate 
on this verse um, in this week as we prepare for the next Sunday. Um, and then um, whilst Prasai, Prasai is talking about Uno, I want to go back to my promise that um, I had promised that I will, we will come and bring the amount of monies that we have collected from uh, the beginning of the year with the fundraising, the fundraising um, events that we've been having. So let me take this opportunity and read out um, this amount to you. For Family Day, um, we had raised um, 10,500. Um, I think, uh, allow me maybe to present all the numbers and then you will give me uh, a clip right at the end, né? so that we don't, uh, we, we don't... 2022, uh, 10,500. And we had Shrove Tuesday, uh, we made 6,500 and and we had Easter offering, we had 18,478. We had Pentecost offering, it was 15,541. And we had special offering for ordinance farewell, it amounted to 11,285. And um, even though I said uh, from the beginning of the year, but I not, uh, uh, let me just uh, highlight this last one, which is June 2022. To say last year, uh, we raised 177,000 for Uno. So you can see um, the, 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 the trend. Né? I thought you would be clapping by this time. <laughs> Uh, so, firstly, this is to say we thank you very much because you are the reason these events become a success. Uh, we also, we, we will present, I think there will be an opportunity for us to just present what has been done and then there are certain things that we must come and uh, request for um, the permission to uh, allocate certain monies in particular. But um, just to, to thank you for making this uh, fundraising event a success all the time. With all the, the, the economic challenges that are there, but um, we have been able to be consistent in our fundraising um, and, and also in the offerings that we give, especially um, your Easter offering and the Pentecost offering. So I would just wanted to, 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 to thank you very much for that. And can we now have a huge round of applause? <laughs> so may we not uh, be wary of, of always giving for, for the kingdom. I think once you, you, you understand it from the, 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 the that premise, then it becomes even simpler for you to, to do it. Um, Muruti, the, the Manchima Simula uh, commemoration happening on the 6th of August, um, you have not made, I don't know if you've made a pronouncement as to will the church be closed and everybody's going there? Okay, so I think you can see uh, the answer there from Muruti. Uh, so, all roads lead to the Manchima Simula uh, uh, commemoration at uh, the Rapi Fields Day. I think it's not the leg. And then I have a letter from our DA uh, uh, audience. And it reads thus Dear Christ Church Cathedral, we as the diocesan ordinance would like to thank you all heartedly for the whole church 
Firstly, for giving us a home far away from home for the past five years. We also like to thank you for the farewell gifts we have been receiving from you all. May the good Lord continue to bless you and all, bless you all, and may he keep on growing his church and leading his people in the right ways. Yours in Christ, Matumkumucho Munyaisu. And I just want to highlight the operative word today. They say uh, we also like to thank you for the farewell gifts we have been receiving. So I just want to tell you that even though I've read 11,000 as what was collected, but uh, additional to that, there have been some congregants who have uh, said to them, no, let me get you a, a new a suitcase to put in your those are the things, that's why they talk about this, they talk of it as an ongoing. Um, so just to say thank you very much uh, for, for the wonderful work that is being done uh, in our church. Thank you very much for the giving that is continuous. And uh, I just want to highlight that the classes, um, confirmation classes have resumed from the 1st of July. Uh, and that uh, the tea duty 16 July 16 July is today. Mm -hmm. the numbers, I think the numbers, they didn't update because here I have Sishiro and I believe Sishiro is doing today. Yes. Okay. Um. But it's said cancer. But it's said no one cancer. It's cancer. Church cancer. Yeah? Not a blue one. <laughs> Thank you very much. And just a reminder, uh, 6th August 2023 is on a Sunday. We are not gathering here. We are going to the rugby field, North Delex uh, rugby field, um, corner Woodbush Street and Vermiculate Street, which is uh, towards, uh, I think it's the side of a uh, modern packaging. Macro, it's, you know, it's that second day, right? a traffic department being on the other side. Uh, so if you are not familiar with the Northern Lex Rugby Club, please, uh, so you can see me at the end of the service, then we can give you, uh, but it's also, I think it's also reflecting on the pure leaflet, so you can just input that on your, on your uh, Google map, it will take you there. Uh, please, I think we, we, we were encouraged to bring chairs. Uh, we are encouraged to bring our own uh, uh, camp chairs or chairs uh, if they can fit in your car. Thank you very much. I think that is about it. Um, and that today, as you can see, the fathers, uh, the men in our church are wearing their red ties. It's their meeting today, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.